never stop chasing your dreams. And never say never. Hey! How's it going? Good, how about with you? Not bad, not bad. <laughs> Just checking to see where Molly's gonna land. Ah, there she is. She, is she a co-host today? Your <laughs> yeah. co-co-host? She's hanging in there. She's a little freaked out by the new um, dryer and freezer. I don't oh, think it's because oh, our dryer yeah. now has a glass door. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The old one didn't. So she just came like, boop, 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 walking in and went. <laughs> She's watching everything go around. <laughs> she was so scared of it. And it's so quiet. So I'm like, what? What could she possibly be scared of? And I realized it was the, the clothes tumbling. <laughs> I haven't known what goes on in that box, you know? Oh, that's funny. That's funny. There she is. So are you loving all of the improvements you went you came home to? I will tell you this much. So far, my favorite thing has been the sink, the white sink. Mm-hmm. But I found that's a little, cool. I found a little water underneath the cabinet. So I'm a little bit nervous that something isn't tightened or <laughs> and i'm loving all the new toilets except that the one downstairs um doesn't flush right so the guy's coming back on tuesday oh. so there's mm -hmm. been a few little things but you know i i i love all of it i just want everything to be working <laughs> it's, all, it's just a small ask but we'll get there <laughs> <laughs> well i guess it's so different over there than it is here. They don't usually get it all right the first time, and then usually, hopefully, most of it the second time. So, oh God, I, I <laughs> seriously hope so. But hopefully, Tuesday will be back in business, and I think I can even get him to look under the sink and see if something needs a washer or something like that. And but all done. yeah, yeah. Let's hope. Let's hope. <laughs> <laughs> but. Outside of all that, everything is good. We're moving into better weather, and that that feels right yeah. and, and good. So, right. um, and we're moving into Pride season, and this is like, this is where Are? we, get, yeah, we get all our great guests. Like tonight, we've got Kelly from Queer Koalas, that, and this is the, uh, out of L.A. And she yes. is, and she is ready. So let's welcome ready. Kelly. Oh. Hey, <laughs> hi. Kelly. Welcome. Hi. Thank you. Hi. Hi. It's great to meet you. We were just saying how this feels like the, the best transition into Pride season, you know? <laughs> yeah. I uh, hope a lot of people feel that way. Yeah. Yeah. You guys are probably going to end up being really busy, right, for the month of June? Yeah. So we launch. It was supposed to be today, but we're moving it to the 28th. Okay. We're sorting out some website kinks. So we're just testing out a few things before everybody hops on. Good. So this is yeah, just done. trying to. Yeah. This is what? Sorry. This is just in time for you. This is in time now and this will post uh, Sunday. So this will be just in time for you and your launch, the show. So that's great. Well, great. Yeah. 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 I'm super excited to see. I've been working on it for like a year and a half now. So it's exciting and vulnerable to put it out there and see who likes it and who's interested and just meet all sorts of new people like you two today. That's just <laughs> been really cool. Yeah. I love well, I got to say, I love your mission. I'm sorry, Denise. Yeah, I, that, I, was, that was exactly what I was going to uh, say. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Tell us a little bit about that so that people understand what Queer Koalas is all about and what the the mission, the goal is? Um, great. Well, first of all, uh, can I get your pronouns? That way I don't mess anybody's up. I'm she, she her. her. She, her. <laughs> okay, um, great. Um, yeah, so basically about, well, I've been working in animation for 15, 18 years, a very long time. And the last few years, I've been working on everybody's NFT projects. And I just kind of had a moment watching everybody else sell out their projects and make the movie or the video game or all the things they wanted to do. And I was like, well, like, you know, like queer women, lesbians don't have a space in L.A. And I've been here for 10 years now. And 
this is like a huge problem. I don't know if it's ever going to happen. You know, I feel like we have the Ruby Fruit, which is a wine bar, which is a like a very good start. Um, so I started doing a little bit more research into how much it would cost to open a full service bar. And then I started crunching some numbers, how many characters I'd have to make. And I was like, wow, this could like actually work. Like if we actually sell out 10,000 of these queer koalas, it'll be enough to open a space. It'll also be enough to offer $5 beverage options for everybody 24 seven. I mean, there'll be other beverage options as well. But you know, one of the really cool things about crowdfunding this is that there's no bank to pay back. You know, yeah. once we have the money, we have the space, we pay the rent, and it gives us about a, a six to eight month runway of literally like, we have six to eight months to make even one dollar. Right. So anything that's made in those six to eight months rolls into the next six months of like paying rent. And it's able to create these sort of new business models that aren't, you know, like a $20 drink because we have to pay back the bank and, right. you know, rent is so high. And it's just, uh, you know, it, mm -hmm. yeah, so it just, uh, so I was like, this could actually be like really cool. And this could actually solve a lot of problems because a lot of places, you know, are just a bit overpriced and they're not accessible or maybe somebody can go once, but, you know, People like need to like go out outside of their homes and like meet different people and learn about each other and go make friends or flirt with somebody or get over a breakup or start a new relationship or, you yeah. know, <laughs> even even just even learn more things about the queer community. You know, like maybe you're like, oh, my sister's queer. I want to know more. Like when she comes to visit, I want to bring mm -hmm. her here. Or my brother, or anybody, you know, like just to find out a little bit more information. So I feel like there's really just like a large group of people that this is going to like service and it's not going to exclude them because it's so expensive. And another really cool mm -hmm. thing is we're trying to do a cafe by day and a bar by night. So it's like, you know, what, if mm -hmm. you don't want to be like around like a loud, crazy party space, come during the day, like yeah. have a latte, relax, you know, meet some friends. I'm trying to also get like musicians, comedians, poets, different people to like come through. You know, I just had a, I just participated in Equality Fashion Week and they had a big like art market. And I was like, this is such a great idea. Like, I feel like the cafe and bar should have like a market either every Saturday or Sunday. That way, like mm -hmm. people can just know like, oh, I can just go in there and maybe I can get like, you know, some cool like thrift vintage stuff, or maybe I can get a painting by an artist or a keychain or a birthday present. And, you know, it would be something like where none of the vendors need to pay to participate. They can just come, set up, first come, first serve, you know, it'll rotate through. And I think that would just be like really great to like bring everybody together, you know, and this is a completely creative project. This is like using like art and animation as like a solution for mm -hmm. all these like very large problems. So I think having like an art market with vendors that like want to share their creativity and all the things they're working on would be like even cooler to like keep developing and have it just as like this great place to come visit on the weekend, during the day, nighttime, like yeah. something will be going on that will be like representative of just everybody's talents in this community. Right. That is just... That's the thing is that you're, you're out of LA. There's so mm -hmm. much talent there and there's so many creatives, you know, right. that you have to say to yourself, how could this not work? You know, right. it's just yeah. like, that. It, it is. Um, I think any kind of queer space like that, that makes you feel safe and makes you feel comfortable and welcome, you know, is, is what everybody looks for you know outside yeah. of an outside of a nightclub you know um yeah you know because every like I, I just a couple weeks ago it was my wife's birthday and we went to a pub here in London well outside of London down by the coast in in Brighton and I love the fact that all over the pub they had queer artists work with their mm -hmm. contact information and the price so you could contact mm -hmm. that artist and actually come back and buy that that piece um and then they just keep mm -hmm. filling it up because there's it's like there's a never-ending 
you know, uh, well of art that they, they could just keeps going up. So it's so, you know, uh, I, I, I just think that places are just now like starting to understand that outside of having an installation or a gallery showing, how do these people, you know, make money? These they're creative, they're talented, they're brilliant. And they're trying to promote a website, you know, with pictures of their work, which is not the same as seeing it, you know, seeing it in a space. Exactly. So I, I yeah. think that it's, that it's really something that's catching on. Like I've seen it in a couple of other pubs too. I see it at my doctor's office. When I sit in the waiting room, there's all kinds of yeah. art on the walls and it's got the artist name and the contact information. And I'm like, this is. Yeah. Yeah. Like, everywhere yeah. yeah so why not like why not celebrate a, a you know a queer piece of art a queer artist a queer you know and nfts seem to be you know digital art right now is just having an explosion mm -hmm. it's just having an explosion yeah. and it's it's just um it's a great way for people to do what they want once they've purchased it you know whether they want to print it out, whether they want to put it on on a, a canvas, or whether you know whatever they want to do with it, leave it on your computer, use it as a wallpaper, whatever they want to do with it, it's theirs, and it's a great way because I don't know about you, but I would say probably like I don't know about maybe started around around five years ago. Anybody I talked to was a graphic art a graphic artist, and mm -hmm. me I like I didn't know what that meant. <laughs> you know, does that mean you build websites? Does that mean you create art online? Does that mean you Photoshop? Like I had no, you know, and now it's like, now I get it. You know, all this time has passed. So many people are in that business. I've yeah, had to yeah. use them for a book cover. I've had to use, like all of a sudden, you know, I see the need. And, and I think, um, you know, like the artist just slid right in there. You know, it was just like a really nice smooth transition um for for that and and i feel like it's it's the way forward in a sense you know it's it's definitely a way forward especially with animation i um you know like i uh, was dabble like trying to find a way to get an idea across for something that i needed animation done for and my my friend said well let me go on fiverr and take a look and see what that's like. And I'm like, didn't even know what that was. I had no clue. Anyway, she found this guy and it turns out she's in LA. I'm in London and he lives 15 minutes from my door and he's queer. <laughs> and it was just wow. like, whoa, that felt like oh. it was meant to be, you know? Yeah, Steve. And he made like the greatest little cartoon figures, exactly what I needed, you know, sent him a bunch of photos, communicated with them. So he got a feel for personality and he just hit it out of the park. And it was like a whole new thing for me, like to learn the background part of it, the rigging, you know, like my director was doing rigging. Steve was creating the character and I was doing like the voice. And it was just like, oh, this is so nice the way this works. This little pot of creatives, everybody bringing their stuff to the table for a, a, a project, you know, that was just a concept at some point. So I get what you mean by like now you're launching on the 28th and you're putting it out there for everybody to see. And you've had all this time to tweak and fix and make it exactly what you want. And you got to show it to everybody. And it's a little bit, you know, makes you feel a little vulnerable. <laughs> I just, it's, it's really interesting. It's been a really cool journey as an artist. I've, I've had to take this like big leap of faith and just be like, okay, like, honestly, Kelly, if nobody buys them, like at me as an artist, I've had a great time making them. And I have really spent like, I just had a good time. You know, I just literally created characters that were things that I've seen in LA. You know, there's like flannel lesbians, there's like tattooed, <laughs> completely koalas, there's kink, there's little roller skate, there's skateboards, there's basketball, there's like surfers, you know, there's some with nipple piercings, they have septum piercings. You know, and it's just all this stuff that, like, you would just never, like, Disney, Pixar would never make it. They would be like, it's it's too much. A little offensive. But, it's a little offensive, right? right? But it's not. It's like, this is literally how people are. Like, this is what people wear. This is how people are living. And this is the way they're expressing themselves. And, like, why are they not being represented in animation? So I was mm -hmm. like, I'm just going to do it. 
So I've been having a blast just like having these really cool characters and thinking about their style and their fashion and just all these like really great things. I mean, even one of the characters is literally the first ever, I think, I haven't found any yet, um, trans top surgery character in CG oh. animation. I don't know if one exists in anime out there somewhere, but like it's literally never been done. And like that was going to be obviously like one of the categories from the get go. Sure. You know, I have yeah. so many friends here and it's just like so awesome watching them like just grow and be like so proud of themselves and then be like representatives for other people and then other people see what they're doing and just like it's just like really cool and inspiring and I think like that's like the biggest part of this project is that once you like see the whole like queer community it's just so like cool and diverse and empowering and inspiring and everybody's so strong and like they help others and everybody understands what's going on and the challenges and you know it's like a really great community that I don't think a lot of like other groups are like really representing paying any attention to and you know the more and more I talk to people it seems like you know out of LGBTQIA plus only like gay men are being represented ever yeah Everybody point. else yeah. is yeah. being excluded. Yeah, across it's everything, bars, spaces, in the bar space. Yeah, mm -hmm. or the clubs, bars, venues, venues like cruises. You know, like Disney yeah. cruises, things like that. Like they're all. It's and so and it's weird. It's kind of like the world is acting like we don't exist. <laughs> yeah, but it's like actually we do exist, and there's like a lot of us, and everybody is so cool and interesting and wildly talented and you know I really think like a space like this and an art project like this is just going to bring like more awareness to like oh my god like what are all these queer women doing wait why don't they have a space why yeah. are there more spaces anywhere in the world why is it like a handful right like, right what's what's yeah. going on like uh you know we are losing our bars I mean left and right bar. it's just they're, I mean, yeah. I'm just back in Florida and I'm like, I'm just stunned that there's no exclusive, you know, lesbian bars anymore. It's just, you get a lesbian night at a gay boy bar, you know. And, and that's a global thing. That's, that's mm -hmm. all over the world. Yeah. yeah. You know? But I am impressed with your, how much you've thought this through. Most artists do not do math, like they, they don't think that way, like mathematically. And you've done the right brain, left brain thing where you figured out how much money you need, like to even how much money a drink should cost. And like, and so if you were gonna get the money from a bank, you know, it's so much better to not go that route and do the crowdfund. But I just think that, like I said, most artists don't think that way. They're just doing the art part of it. So you're so well prepared and this is so well thought out I just can't see this losing because I I think it's there's a need and you know you are you the only artist or do you have other artists uh, will other artists be contributing their work to the project when you get a space it's just me right now doing the koalas and I have had help from like a few people that are like finance specialists, trademark law. And it's really amazing. They've all That's appeared. Awesome. They've all appeared from the Instagram ad post where, you know, I was like, hey, I'm looking awesome. for somebody that could help me like with finance stuff. And, you know, Rupali was like, hey, I do finance and like I'm a queer woman and I want to like help out and like let me know what you need help with. So yeah. it's been really cool to like tap into all the resources that like I don't specialize in. But, like, mm -hmm. from the beginning, I kind of knew that I was, like, I shouldn't be scared. Like, there's a lot of people that are really good at what they do. They want this yeah. to happen. And the right people will come along at the right times when I need it. I just need to, like, pose the question out into the world and see who responds and just follow the leads. And, That's... you know, put all these pieces together and just not be intimidated that, like, I am not a finance specialist, but Rupali is, and she loves finance and she's right. done this for a million startups. And she's like, Oh my God, like, this is perfect. Like I want to do something for my community. I want this space. So it's just been really beautiful actually seeing like everybody 
contribute. And that is. there will be, yeah, no, it's been really cool. And like, this is what I thought would happen and what I wanted to happen, you know, just like, let's just see, you know, because I'm only one person. Right. You but know? you but have like, resources. That's the exactly. nice thing. Yeah. Like once right. you tap into those resources and everybody's kind of lending their specialty or their expertise, mm -hmm. you know, A, you don't feel alone. B, you don't feel like right. you're failing at something. Right. And C, yeah. they're, you know, actually contributing something that they, they specialize in. You can yeah. learn from it. You know, it, it will obviously help in the end result for the, for the project. So yeah, I mean, why not, why not tap yeah. into those resources? Yeah. And I think, you know, um, I, I think one of the things that always astounds me is um, the quirkiness of our community. You know, like mm -hmm. if you ask somebody like, you know, do you know a venue that would be okay with having like a spoken word, word slam poetry thing? Boom. They know it. And they know mm -hmm. somebody that knows, you know, the place and they can hook you up. It's just reaching out sometimes. Right. True. You, you yeah. know what I mean? Like sometimes you don't want to ask for help for whatever That's reasons, true. you know, but when you do, I just find that you usually get exactly what you were looking for, you know, and it yeah. makes a difference in the world to you, to them, to the, you know, the ones that have helped and contributed. It's like a nice little cycle, you know, that, that, that we find the minute we open up and just ask, you know, you're right. Yeah, and I mean, take, uh, make everyone's contributing so now you have like teamwork so you have more the energy of more people pulling for this to work you can focus more on your art because you're not wearing all the hats so you've got the person doing the finance and that's like really like the right recipe for a successful project is to put people around you who are better at other things that you're not the best at you find right. those people yeah, that's the best. Yeah, way and to it. yeah, and one of the cool things about getting the koalas, and this is like a really cool thing about NFTs, is you're going to be getting this animation from a queer artist, and you're supporting the space. But then there's all these benefits that will come from owning a queer koala, and like one of the benefits is actually like a private entrepreneur like group chat that'll be like on a Discord. And the way that mm -hmm. this will like operate is that it's going to be basically like a resource for people, you know, like it'll be like a Rolodex of things that people need. Like I want to start a knitting company, mm -hmm. like who makes websites, who does taxes and it'll be a series of vetted people. And it'll be like the same thing you said, instead of like asking your friend, you're going to be like, Oh wait, like I have a queer koala. I can go on this like, room and I could like find out all these resources from queer people and hopefully it becomes this like big international project and it's like something like Fiverr or like you know basically like a very like more organized Google but a vetted people that you trust you know or like hey I'm trying to I'm trying to have a party like who's a DJ in this area you know mm -hmm. or like who's a musician or who's ever like you know taught at a school I want to go to like nursing school like you know I feel like there's just like all these questions that people have yeah. and sometimes getting the answers is so complicated and everybody's so lost and this is like a way of like bringing people together that are like trying to do things like you know I'm writing yeah. a book how do I publish this book I have a script you know and it's like connecting all these people so there's going to be like some really good like fun discord groups like that that like if you're a queer koala member you're going to be able to access Another one is, you know, looking for friends. I feel like that's the biggest one where, like, people sometimes are just like, I just want a friend, you know? Like, there's, like, a cool play down the street, and, like, I don't want to go by myself. Right. You know? Mm -hmm. So it's, like, connecting people through friends. There's also going to be a chat just uh, for, like, singles. Like, I'm single. I'm ready to get out there. The dating apps suck. Right. Maybe somebody that has a queer koala and is already on here and is like a member and like, Hey, we already are supporting this project. We want the space. Like we're kind of already aligned on, you know, a few things. Um, so those are some of the things that are going to be like rolled out throughout the year for people to like use and develop and kind of create 
this like ecosystem of more queer people working together. Um, <clears throat> I was on a cruise and you know, we were going to different ports and stuff and um, we all had put these apps on our phone. The first one was everyone, everywhere is queer. Mm -hmm. you, you kind of open it up and it, you know, you pinpoints your location and tells you where the queer spots are in that area. So you feel safe Ooh. going to them. And then there was yeah. another one that was because my wife is like vegan and gluten free and all that kind of stuff. There was an app on her phone that would show you the same thing with, you know, a restaurant that met your dietary needs and, you know, had reviews from people, you know, who had, had been there before and it would give you the location. So I feel like it's like, it's probably going to end up being something that, you know, becomes one of these things where you can find each other, you know, um, and especially, if yeah. it's, you know, I mean, outside of LA, you know, they're in the whole big world. So yeah, it'll be really, really nice to see the growth of it. You know, like you said, oh, if this yeah. is on the 28th and is it going to be like the wet people go in, do they get to select the koala they want to buy? Yeah, so the process is going to be basically um, the whole website's going to have a new page and it's going to have this buying purchase page. And currently, right now, the first 5,000 are going to be available, which are the cuties. And basically, mm -hmm. we have a few tiers. Cuties are the first tier. They cost $100. There's 5,000 of them. So, like, everybody can grab one. And then there's the hotties tier, which is 3,900. And then there's going to be a rare tier of 1,000 and a super rare of 100. And then there's one alchemist, only one. Oh. And the alchemist, yeah, the alchemist is one character, goes on sale. And that one will probably be actually the coolest and have literally, like, all <sighs> the koalas in it and just this, like, insane animation that I'm going to create. But basically... The first cuties that are going to go on sale on the 28th, and we're going to release them in tiers every two months, two months, like the new ones will come out. So I think it'll be kind of fun and exciting to see like, you know, when are they coming out? What are going to be the new ones? Um, yeah. So, yeah, and, it, and the buying is going to be really easy. You're going to be able to check out with Google Pay, Apple Pay, credit card. Nice. There's even Klarna. Mm -hmm. So if you want to pay in installments, you know, like. $25 at a time for installments over four months, you know, yeah. um, all of that will be available. And the way you'll go and select it is you'll go through some categories and the categories are all really fun. They're basically like, um, there's all the Zodiacs. There's going to be the style one that has tattoo, king, flannel, lesbians. Then there's going to be all the sports, any sport, soccer, basketball, surfing, skating, roller skating then there's going to be the whole pride section and in the pride section are all of our like pride flags there's an intersectional flag there's a lesbian flag there's a bisexual flag and there's a trans flag there's even a drag koala oh. and there's a whole top surgery category so those are the pride ones and then there's a substance sort of psychedelic mushroom one <laughs> and that'll be its own little thing but those are going to basically be the categories, you know? And then there's, like, a few careers that are, like, a cowpoke, an astronaut. And then there's, like, a boss and, like, a whole suit. Oh, yeah. Um, ah. So, oh, you know. This is, this is, like, reminiscent of when the Smurfs came out. Do you remember <laughs> that, Denise? Yeah, I do. They were so old. I'm so old. I do, I do. Uh, right? I know, I know. Yeah. We're way older. We remember that. Do you even know who the Smurfs are? I do know. I actually oh, no. worked on the. I actually worked on the Smurfs movie, so I'm really familiar with the Smurfs. Excellent, oh, okay. excellent. Yeah, and you'd go into like the Hallmark store because they sold them at Hallmark usually, or like card stores, and they'd have like the new ones every month. And it would be the little kayaking Smurf, the Smurf, the guitar playing Smurf, the yeah. you know all the different like exactly what you were saying, the walks of life, which is so. Great because it will appeal to so many different people. They're going to want their koala for who they are, like for what yeah. represents them. It's like so cool. What I like yeah, about it is that it's not a physical, tangible thing. So you can't yeah. lose it. 
Like <laughs> that, yeah. you know, like that's important to me. It's not a keychain <laughs> that's going to fall off. It's not a, you know, thing that you have to carry with you. You let it, you won't be able to lose this. And I found this really great company called Crossmint. And they're the ones that basically have created a platform to accept all these credit cards, Apple Pay. And so basically what happens when you buy one, Crossmint in the background makes a digital wallet for you stores it you enter in your email you like log in and um your nft is right there that's what i mean like that's that like is... it, it's gonna be really easy like and the whole point of crossmint is like making nfts accessible like mm -hmm. you just log in and there they are you just see them you know you don't have to go through your crypto wallet there's no like okay. codes if oh, you lose a series exactly. of numbers it's gone forever no like this is like trying to really bring a lot more people into this world and like collect more things online and just have like an easy, safe place where they can access it. I think easy is the key word. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I do think that people want to learn about it, but they're, they're scared of technology a little bit, you know, like we all have to go through like walking your parents, you know, on what to do with a downloaded picture and where it goes and how can they find it again and and you see their struggle and now yeah. we're getting like that because we can barely keep up with the technology so sometimes i think people are a little bit frightened by it so making it so that it's so easy that anybody can do it is such a plus it's such a plus it takes away the fear of doing it versus like cuz that's what it's going to come down to isn't it it's going to come down to a can i afford this and b will I be able to access this? Like, do I, is this too much? So putting an ease to it, already making it affordable, being able to have installment plans, being able to do Apple Pay, you know, whatever, all that kind of, you know, easy stuff that we're doing anyways. I think that it's going to um, make people want want to do it and, and not be frightened of it in any way. Yeah. And, you know, when you get it, you're going to have like, you'll be able to download it to your device. So you'll probably download it to your phone or your computer. You'll always have the email, you know, and then you can share it on your Instagram. You can yeah. share it on your social. You can do whatever. You can text somebody it. Um, and the idea is that, yeah, I think for like a minute. And the, and the cool thing is like all these NFTs and everything, like it just started. Like it's like four or five years old. You know? Exactly. Exactly. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I think. When they first started, you know, they were trying to do these like really complicated wallets, all this stuff. Mm -hmm. And I think now we've come to the point where it's like, nobody likes that. That wasn't really helpful. Like what we're, what we like is like, here's my email. Here's my login. I go to this page. My stuff is there. Right. And so now, you know, bigger companies are trying to like work towards this. Crossman is trying to facilitate this. And they've worked with like, a bunch of other like really large scale projects to make it really easy for people to like access the stuff, yeah. you know, in ways that we're like familiar with. And not to mention that, you know, like Gen Z and generation alpha, they're like, they've been buying stuff on the internet since they were born. Yeah. They're, it's, like, so true. it's so true. Isn't it? You know, they're very used to collecting and having stuff and using it and moving it around and logging in. And, you know, a big part for me in this project is like, I don't want, you know, queer women or the LGBTQI plus community to get left behind on this technology. Right. You know, I want everybody to be like, oh, yeah, like I have an NFT. I did it to open up this lesbian bar in LA. And people right. are like, what? And you're, Imagine you're like, yeah, I have that one. statement. I mean, that's amazing. It, that's so exactly. Cool. Like, that's what I want everybody to have. You know, I want, I don't want everybody to be like, oh, I don't know. What is it? And just, they're like, no, it's really easy. I bought it. I can go look at you want to see it right now. Yeah. Check it out. And then it's like, look, and now the space is open. And, you know, it's like, this is like, for me, one of the most exciting parts of NFTs is that you can gather a community, you can create an art project, and that community can help fund a goal. Right. You know, right. and it's, you know, right. it, and that's what this like being able to have 10,000, like having 10,000 canvases to sell like at any art gallery is like very hard impossible doesn't make sense yeah but we have the internet you know we have i don't know what happens <laughs> Just, I'm sorry i'm so sorry <laughs> <laughs> one of the things we were talking about is the fact that um trying to make this easy 
for people like us that are a little bit like, you know, nervous about NFTs and technology and digital art and all that kind of stuff. And, and um, the ease at what, how this is rolling out um, makes it um, a little more, well, no, it seems less to freak out about, you know, a, it's a, a little, there's, you know, it makes it seem really super easy. So people aren't frightened about it. Like one of the um, things a, a couple of years ago, lesbians who tech is a, it's a really big group. And I guess I never really understood what they did. So I started following them, but I've watched the way that they're growing and mm -hmm. I'm amazed you know, at a, it, it started this tiny little group, you know, that would just get together and meet and then it got bigger and they were having bigger meeting. It's fucking global now. You know, it's like, holy crap, there, you know, conventions are everywhere. And it just goes to show that there is a need, you know, to stay up on technology, to not be frightened of it. And I think, mm -hmm. this, first of all, it's an adorable way. It's an adorable way to do it because who doesn't love a koala? <laughs> yeah. and, and it'll be fun, you know. You'll go through and like, there's like a rock star one, and you'll see, oh, that's me. I'm the rock star. And then you'll be like, oh, do I want a neon green one? Do I want a red one? Do I want a black one? Yeah. And you get it, and you'll be like, wow, that's so cool. Like, this is like a color I like. This is like yeah. me. Yeah, yeah. It's really, really a a, a great idea, and I think that. Um, Again, it's it's a fantastic way, but eye on the prize, you know, what it will help create right. then goes, you know, it makes it even even better because I'm just, you know, I'm it's heartbreaking, you know, to know that there are so few uh, queer spaces and, and you know, oh. le lesbian spaces, too, because, I mean, it wasn't always like that. It wasn't always like that. And you I'm know, still trying to figure out what happened. Like, yeah. why did that happen? You I know, always because say, I, and I'm, and I, I don't want to come across as being like snarky in any way, shape, or form, but I feel like men get paid more, regardless of whether they're gay or straight. They have a bigger salary, they have less family obligations, you know. Um, as a, on, on the whole, you know, yeah, there's like a lot of gay dads that are raising families and all that kind of stuff. And it's really cool and everything, but more often than not, there aren't. And they have that expendable cash to take cruises, yeah. To, yeah. Go, and yeah. to go to bars, to spend money, to buy clothes, to, you know, they're the ones that are spending, spending, spending. So marketing people, you know, uh, aim right at them. And they're like, well, you know what? Lesbians are going to invest it back into their homes, back into their families. You know, they and, and they know that we don't make as much as women. They just know it. So mm -hmm. I think that their shift is always to aim it right at the gay men who have that extra expendable cash that they're totally fine with blowing, you know. And now it's like the one of the things that I'm starting to see, which really, you know, kind of makes me makes me happy is that there are a lot of queer financial advisors out there. Like I just started following a bunch of them on threads, which is still new, still trying to figure out how you, you know, find people and follow them and whatnot. And I know it's so integrated with um, Instagram, but it's really nice to see that there are, you know, financial advisors out there that whether they're just like posting tips and stuff like that, I just, it's really helpful. And there's also, like media companies now that are so much more broad, you know, and travel and a lot of lesbian travel is, is starting to gain its footing again. And so there are things that they are trying to gear towards us. Um, but I, I just don't, I don't think it's enough. I still think we need a physical bricks and mortar space. Oh, you know, absolutely. Those are just gone. You know, you know, my theory was always that I felt that women can go anywhere. And it was I think it's been like this a long time. Women could go anywhere together as a couple and they're accepted where men back like 10 years ago, or even 20 years ago and beyond couldn't go into bars and dance together, hold hands, you know, be affectionate towards each other. But women, it was a lot more accepted. 
So, you know, I remember when I was working in, uh, do you remember our playhouse, Denise, on uh, Oakwood Park Boulevard? Definitely. It's a, it was a lesbian bar, Kelly. And uh, I played there with my duo partner. And uh, so, I and I at the time I was married, right? So my ex-husband and his friend went to a regular bar that night and Claire and I were playing at our playhouse. They saw more girl on girl action at the bar they were at than where we were because we were at a sports bar and all the women were playing pool and watching the game and drinking beer and line dancing because we were playing country music. Yeah. But they were like, oh my God, there were these two women make it at the bar. And I'm like, really? Because that wasn't even happening where I was tonight. So I just think, and this was 15 years ago. So I think that that was always my theory. It's more accepted socially for women to be affectionate to each other publicly than it is for men. So they need their own bars and their own places to go where the women could go anywhere. So that's why maybe the lesbian bars went away. I mean, I don't know. That was just a little theory of mine as a performer at the, you know, playing in the clubs, thinking that. What you, you were know. noticing. Yeah, it's, it is. I know. Playing in the bars. Yeah. It's hard. Yeah. You know, we see, um, you know, and I do think, and every, I feel like no matter what state you're in, every community has their lesbian Pied Piper who will open a bar, do a pop up, open a restaurant, do a food truck, whatever, and everyone's going to go because they know this mm -hmm. person. But take somebody that's not known and have them try and do it, and it just ultimately fails, you know, because yeah. there is a lot of word of mouth within the community. So uh -huh. it's, you know, it's really hard to say, you know, obviously what the reason is, but there's a lot of notice, you know, like I, a lot of people are now noticing it and now missing it. You know, you have yeah. the, lesbian, the Leah Delaria's lesbian bar project, which are, you know, are going around and trying to figure it out and, and start yeah. moving. my friend, uh, Kristen and her, her wife, are starting a lesbian travel show where they're going globally. They were just in Barcelona and they're mm -hmm. going to lesbian communities and le talking to lesbian business owners, whether it's bar, restaurant, store, clothing, you know, whatever it is, and talking to them about how they feel as a business owner. Like, are they, are they scared? You know, what was the final push to get them to, to, to do it, to open it up and, you know, digging in a little bit and, and trying to figure things out. So I think like it all plays into exactly what you're doing. You know, it just means that we notice that we're missing our spaces and we get it, but we need them, you know, regardless yeah. of whether you think yeah. we're going to spend money at them, you know, I mean, <laughs> at least you're gearing towards making it affordable instead of the opposite. Yeah, that's the best part. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, I think like all of this just really speaks to like, yeah, the pay inequality, banks, you know, willing to give men more money for investments, their ideas. And I think what's going to be really cool about this is like once it's up and running and it's open and it's going to be packed, like it's going to be packed. Yeah. Like right now, the Ruby Fruit, which only serves wine, is always packed in L.A. Right. So like and there's just, you know, like if you have a pop up or an event or Dinah Shore or something like a festival for like queer women, it's packed. Yeah. You know, like we are out there in the numbers. And I think once people see it, they're going to, you know, it's just the power of representation. Like, wow. Okay. Like look at this like artist, like she can be like an entrepreneur and open up a space. Like I can do it. I can do this thing. You know, it's cutting edge what you're doing because NFTs are like right there. You know, this mm -hmm. is the time, this is the time to do it. Artists want to be seen. Artists want to be heard. Artists want to participate. So it's, it's, um, I, I don't, I, I, I think it's just, it's really broad, you know, but all we see is what, what's in our little three foot space or whatever. And something I, like this has to start there. It has to start there so that other people can look at it and say, Hey, maybe I can do this in Seattle. Hey, maybe she'll help me, you know, do something on the East coast or, you know, and then it starts to snowball and you see it happening, but it's, um, it's the time. Like, I do think the time is now. The timing is absolutely perfect. 
you yeah. know. Yeah, and, and I've had somebody perfect. reach out to me from Detroit and they're like, we're going to watch your project because we don't have a lesbian bar. So, you hey, know, it could imagine. be very, very much used as like a blueprint. And I would like for other places to use this as a blueprint. And even once the space is open, it would it really would not be that wild for somebody to be like, wow, that's making a lot of money. We, we should open it. another one. We can do right. it. And then it's like, great. We should have a, like more lesbian bars. This is great. Like people want to go to different places. Like we got to mix them up, make different vibes, you know, but to yeah. like have other people see that like, wow, like, I had to see it to believe it that, like, queer women existed and they wanted to socialize. Yeah. I even have friends, like, that are sober. They've been sober for seven years. They still want to go out. Yeah, of course. They still want to socialize. If they want to be sober and they don't want to go to a bar, they could go to the cafe during the day and meet yeah. people that way, too. Yeah. yeah. I like even, covering that. I mean, even the mocktails are going to be very affordable. Because right now, the mocktails in L.A. are also, like, $25. I know. So it's kind of like, you know what? Like, no, even the mocktails are going to be affordable. Like, you know, it's just, like, all, it's just, like, addressing things that just do not make sense. And Mm -hmm. trying to have these new business models. Because, you know, the old way, whatever, good, what's good business, like, is actually not good business. It's just greedy and being, like, capitalistic. And that just doesn't serve anybody. It's better to be like, okay, what do we actually need? And like work with that and just like go from so there make, and keep adjusting to work. people's needs. Yeah, it's all about affordability because if you don't have the money to go out, you're not going out. You know, like if yeah, you exactly. that you're going to, you know, a night at the movies now, you know, it's like $40 for two tickets and then whatever they're raping you at the concession stand for fucking popcorn and soda. <laughs> right. You know, it's like true. that's a hundred dollar evening right there. So where everybody's aware of that's that. And the same thing with bars. So I I do think the affordability is gonna be a huge factor in this. And I love that you've taken that into consideration because I just don't think that whether it's a straight bar or a restaurant or anything right now, I get that, you know, there's a lot of things that are economy driven. You know what I mean? Like you yes, the price of alcohol is going up, you know, like we we used to have a bartender on that would talk about these amazing, you know, things and then go and like mezcal might not be around that much longer because of, you know, global warming and climate change. You're not going to be able to grow the agave anymore. And you're like, <laughs> you know, so yeah, they're going to jack the prices up on things. It's just exactly. you know, it's where we're at. But I think that what bi- most business models lack is the space for that to happen. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it's not happening in this moment. So stop charging us as if it is, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Let us, you know, uh, save up for when things do start going haywire. But again, I just, uh, your business model smart enough to recognize it's what's needed right now, you know, and that's yeah. the fact that the, you know, having to sit in your house for two fucking years because of COVID, you know, really changed people's ways of doing things. Some of us got completely complacent and perfectly okay, never leaving the (laughs) house like me. And there's other people now that are just in the Jones zone and want to go out and socialize because they can, you know, and have these, (laughs) you know, these spaces. So it's, you know, it is, again, timing is everything. And I think that you're hitting the mark on every single level and i just don't see how something like this can fail so we're we're super happy to have been on and be able to talk oh yeah at the perfect time of your launch (laughs) no yeah it's gonna take you know telling everybody a lot of people Ten thousand is a lot of little koalas but i believe there's ten thousand people out there that care about it that want to see it that want to be involved that want something different that like you know really addresses like their needs that have been forgotten ignored yeah. ignored you know and Wallace, what what made you choose that to be your little character um i just had drawn this character before and i painted it on a canvas and i've had it for like 4 or 5 years in my room and when i was deciding like oh I should really like go ahead and do this project like it all makes sense like this could really work I was like oh I already have a character I love this little curly fingered like original character was just called curly 
and he saw these like curly little claws and all the koalas have these little curly claws yeah. and i was like this is so cute and it's really actually fascinating even to me that i've made him that it's the same character but they look so different with different outfits different poses different animation yeah. they just like take on these personalities and it's really it's cool awesome. and impressive to see and like I don't know. And it was just a character that I had drawn for like a few years. I had, I made a painting of it. It was in my room. It was just around me. And then when I was like, I'm going to make 10,000 of something, I should really like it. So. Exactly. Very yeah. good. Yeah. It's, it's, and they're so you cute. I mean, show us? I love do you them. Have one, do you have one there you could show us now? Do you want to see the rock star one? Yes. Yeah. I love to see the rock star one. Yep. Yeah. And it's just rock it out. Yeah, you know, it's just like, it's it's having you, a good Jenny. time. It, it knows what. Uh, it's doing a little power cord. Oh, nice. <laughs> ah, so, I love that. That is really cool, Kelly. I love the shoes. The boots. JD, I yeah, it's got those. Cool right? boots. Yeah, it's got some jewelry, some piercings. Like this one doesn't have a septum, but oh, some of them do. Piercing, but ears. <laughs> the ears. Yeah, they have so these cool. little heart-shaped noses that are really cute. Yeah. You know, they got little hats. All the guitars come in different colors. There's like neon blue, neon green. Oh, nice. So, so yeah, fantastic. so there's just like so many fun ones and they're so cute and it's just like great to explore and like once the page is up and live um i think everybody's gonna have a really good time honestly going through and like seeing different ones and being like oh that'll be that the best so part is looking, yeah doing the brow yeah this like, one's so cute this one's yeah. so great yeah that's gonna um, be fun yeah yeah and i'm trying to encourage people like you know grab one for yourself Grab one for a friend, gift one out, like, you know, it's going to require a whole community effort to, like, make all of this happen. But I think as people get them and start sharing them out, they're going to be like, oh, cool, like, I want one. I want a little Zodiac, oh, yeah. like, Leo, oh. or I want an Aries, or I want a Gemini, or, like, this is a cool way of, like, supporting, like, a queer artist. If you have a friend that's birthday is coming up, and you're like... Here you go. And then once they have them, then you'll be able to have all these cool like member benefits, you know, to totally. like hop on and, you know, do the friends group. There's going to be like monthly what's, raffles for everybody. What's really cool. And one of the things we got to remember is, again, with with uh, social media being as overwhelming as it is, I just think that people lose sight of how important it is to retweet or repost or share something you know, that they right. need. Right. So in order to get the word out, we know we'll let our viewers know to go look for queer koalas on um, Instagram and all the other sites so that they can, mm -hmm. you know, do their own research. And then when this is the site going to be queer Yeah. The site is queer That's launching the... on 28th. Perfect. Yeah. More you... weekend, right. Yeah. If you put Queer Koalas in anything, Twitter, we're Queer Koalas on Twitter, Queer Koalas LA on Instagram, we're on threads. We're on literally everything. So just, you know, it yeah. should be easy to find. And yeah. And if people share it out, like that's what I'm encouraging people, you know, I'm like, share it out because you like really never know who's like, oh, cool. Like I didn't know about this. Now I know about it and I could be either more involved, learn about it. This is a group. They're doing cool stuff. Maybe people are in animation. Maybe they're in NFTs. Yeah. Who knows? I feel like you just like don't know, and like that's the really cool thing about sharing something like on your stories or Instagram. Yeah, it is. It's really important. I do think people were so like scroll, 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 scroll. You know, stop, read a headline. Scroll, scroll, scroll. Hit a heart. Hit a heart. Hit a heart. But nobody's reposting or you know sharing right. like that that information. So it's really important for people to do that in order for it to pick up the steam, you know, that we want and drive people to the website so they can literally browse the koalas and decide which one they like, understand why it's important and all that other stuff. So, um, yeah. yeah. Think, and get excited about it. Like, tell all their friends, be like, yeah. there are no lesbian spaces. 
we want to try and make one like, hey, hello, like, yeah. you know, just bringing like awareness to these issues, I think alone will be like a success. I do think it's motivating, you know? like it, it'll motivate people to remember oh. that, you know, that we don't have these spaces, that we are being ignored and it'll give that there's a big community, you know, yeah. there's and a big community a together. Yeah. 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 So it's like, you're not alone. There is a big community. Yeah. This will go up on the 26th. I just looked at the date. You're okay. launching on the 28th, so that's perfect. And then it'll be up there. Once it's up, it stays up. So yeah. that's perfect. Cool. Yeah, ours will it'll stay up there, and it'll keep, you know, hopefully driving people to it. So, listen, we appreciate your time. I know you've yes. got to be incredibly busy, um, but thank you for sharing so much about it and, you know, giving us a better understanding what the project is for and about and how it's going to be used. And I think it's so informative, and I really, really – appreciate you, um, you know, going into depth and letting people know w what's, what they can be ready for. It's going to be great. Oh, yeah. 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 It's awesome. going to be great. It's going to be easy. It's going to be fun. You're probably going to think a lot of them are really cute. <laughs> I think a lot of them I are so cute. Already. I'm going to yeah. get him. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, it's like, they're so cute. And I'm like excited for people to see them because I've been working really hard all year on them. And I've really been like, just making characters that I see in the community, you know? So I feel like hopefully really? people will really resonate and love them. Yeah. I think people will find ones they identify with right off the bat, without a doubt. Look at JD, man, that, that, that koala had your boots. Had your I have my boots, my right earrings. Here. Yeah. Your earrings. Yeah. You're, yeah. You're to, oh my God. This is so ridiculous. <laughs> Perfect. Well, Kelly, thank you again so much. We, we really, really appreciate it. We want everybody to check out Queer Koalas LA on the uh, mm -hmm. Instagram and go from there and be ready yes. for that lunch on the 28th. Good luck to you. Yes. Oh, thank you so much. Have a good day. Thanks for having me on. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. I wake up in the morning with voices in my head. Try to find a reason to get out of my bed. My mind is so distracted by what used to be a dream. The best things in life aren't always what they seem. I start a new page, take a new direction, dance in the rain, try some reinvention. With faith I will get through the storm I'll find my way on my own I'm almost home There's a freedom in the feeling There's nothing left to lose My future destination will be what I will choose. I know life can be tough. I'll be a little tougher when I see the lightning. I won't fear the thunder. I'll start a new page, take a new direction, dance and rain, try some reinvention. With faith I will get through the storm I'll find my way on my own I'm almost here Sometimes it was a hunger That kept me alive But I've made my peace And I have survived I'm almost home When I see the lightning, I won't fear the thunder I'll start a new page, take a new direction Dance in the rain, try some reinvention With faith I will get through the storm 
I'll find my 